Welcome to Round Hill Radio, the podcast from Round Hill Community Church. Through our conversations, we discover the holy and the ordinary, find moments of grace and peace, and redefine what we're talking about when we talk about faith. Good morning, Ed. Good morning, Leslie. Happy. Happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. How are you today? Waiting for April. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and we're I'm still also, in March apparently. We're still in March apparently. Still. Still. <laughs> I'll take it. I'm okay with that actually. <laughs> so today we're talking about something pretty exciting that's happening, what I would call in-house. Mm-hmm. Um, which is that a new curriculum is being developed mm-hmm. um, for the kiddos. Mm-hmm. But I would say it's also a kind of culture-wide, community-wide focus, mm-hmm. if you will. Would you tell us a little bit about that? Yes. Thanks. Great intro. Thanks so much. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so for during the pandemic, which is, of course, still now, yeah. um, we started to think about what, what would education and faith formation look like? you know, in a, in a new day, mm-hmm. if we had an opportunity to reinvent ourselves. And actually, we looked backwards first uh, at something that we had done a few years ago, mostly for the adult members of the congregation, mm-hmm. which was to develop a year-long process called a, a life worth living. And we focused on a value each month, some, some attribute of Christian faith that we wanted to explore more deeply. Right. So we, we thought about that and wondered, how, how could we make that work for children, some of whom are still not coming um, to our in-person classes. Sure, sure. So this has to be mobile, which is a good thing because the ministry of Jesus was very mobile yes. and portable. Mm-hmm. So in his name, we're doing this. And, um, and the other thing is that it needed to be able, it, it, it can't be overwhelming. Sure. Right. So we have two remarkable people who lead our Christian education programs for children, uh, Lizzie Sid and Tanya Priyatka. And so we worked together with them and the Christian education committee, and we came up with a model where we would focus on a value each month. And this is, I would consider this a prototype, an experiment. And so by focusing on that one value, we would then open it up by giving children several ways to engage it. So there will be always um, age-appropriate material that will include an activity, a story, Mm -hmm. some way to engage this value and to practice it, and um, some visual learning as well, because we have a lot of visual learners in Mm -hmm. our community as well as everyone you know all kinds of learners so that's how we've started it off and and we just thought well let's just take a look at the first few months so of course we started with love why not right start there great place to start start there Um, we're including within the first few months the theme of peace because that's on everyone's minds Mm -hmm. right now especially with war going on in ukraine so that's how it got started and are these values now, oh, this is a little behind the scenes, I'm actually working with some of those same people and our incredible team of communications people mm-hmm. on uh, actually a new church website right, right. now. Mm-hmm. And there is a values page. There's a value sort of section. So yes. I did some work on that. Is this the same list mm-hmm. of values. Now, where did those come from? How, do, how were those developed for us? So again, during these past two years, when we've, some of our activities have been severely curtailed, we asked ourselves, you know, how could we clarify our, our vision and our mission as much as possible mm-hmm. at this time when things may change suddenly, right? Yeah. So our board of trustees, which is our governing body, took it upon themselves to clarify the vision the vision of which for us is not just a vision for the church, it's an expansive vision for the world, a mm-hmm. world in which all people are treated and cherished as children of God and where the world is treated as the gift that it is. Mm-hmm. So that's our vision. And our mission is to be a community of compassion that lives out that vision. So mm-hmm. to learn what it means to be a compassionate person and a mm-hmm. compassionate community. And then from that, we said, well, what would be the, the values that would comprise that, you know, um, what matters most to a compassionate community. Right. It's going to be love, healing, peace, justice. And we came up with an initial list 
and talked about that, studied that, and then that's what you're working with, and that's what will be included on our website. Mm -hmm. And uh, truth be told, we may find that those values will, they might be updated, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's where all of that material came from. Oh, fascinating. Now, I, ha I want to dig in a little bit, if we can, into this word values, mm -hmm. because I realize a lot of my questions <laughs> come from having been in a very conservative upbringing, sure. uh -huh. um, not necessarily in my home, but in my community, mm -hmm. you know, being raised in the South and uh, being raised in a more, um, you know, not the kind of church I would choose to attend today, mm. um, <laughs> but try to be nice about it. <laughs> and so I think I, I have, and I don't know if other people have this experience when I hear values based mm -hmm. whatever yes i kind of cringe a little on the oh, inside good that gives us something to talk about well, there you go <laughs> um and so i wonder a if i'm not alone in that and b kind of i'm i'm because we talked about i think it was what two months ago sort of redefining and reclaiming the word strength mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, as being a word of compassion right mm -hmm. um and i'm kind of interested now about talking about maybe it sounds like we're reclaiming the word values huh. as maybe a word of justice uh -huh. if i can stretch it that far i love it yeah um can you is that am, am i am i on the right track how, how, what do you think about all that you're on a great track oh super <laughs> thanks so much <laughs> i've got a great story please do so it, it relates to the word values oh good so by the way when i think about values i really so when someone says, so what do you value most? It's really what are your highest priorities in life? Yeah. And as one person put it to me, you know, and if you're having to decide between things, the thing that you value is kind of a 10 out of 10, right? So yeah. if, if let's say your personal health is something that you value, mm -hmm. that's a 10. Mm -hmm. um, let's say a, a number two on that scale would be eating like that third donut. <laughs> <laughs> That day. I mean, speak for yourself. But okay, uh, fine. okay right? Just remember, donuts make the world go round. Yes, they do. So, <laughs> so you, so when you're making decisions, you think, okay, my highest value is my personal health. The, the mm -hmm. third donut, that's a, that's barely a two, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So it helps me to make a decision in that moment that look, it's a ten. The ten out of ten is your personal health. Mm -hmm. Forget the donut. It's okay. move on. Okay? okay, and that can be very, very helpful right? When we're making decisions. Many years ago, actually, I had just started as a sole pastor of a congregation in New Hampshire. And as soon as I got there, people told me, oh, well, before you arrived, we had this idea that we were going to all the churches together in town, mm -hmm. and we were going to do this study series together. And they said to me, we want you to go out to this particular church, which was not known for its community openness. Uh. And we want you to encourage them to be involved. Okay. And being the newbie in town, I, I said, sure. Sure. Happy to do that. Okay. <laughs> and uh, so I went, spoke with pastor. He was about my age. We had the same kind of, you know, kind of interest in life to a certain degree. And uh, we were talking and I said, well, I'd, I'd like you to, to be involved with this. In fact, it was, you know, around encouraging families of faith and so on. And I said, uh, we'd love for you to be part of this, this series. And I said, he said, well, what will, what will we get out of it as a congregation? And I said, well, there's the sort of like cross pollinization that happens, you know, when people mm -hmm. are just getting together and they're talking, they're sharing ideas, they're asking questions, they're exploring. And he said, that is exactly what I do not want my congregation to do. Oh, no. <laughs> I love that story, by the way. Oh, my goodness. And he said, I'm not interested in my congregation asking you questions. He oh, said, no. we know, we already know what all the right values are. Oh. We're not interested in, in exploring or asking or, yeah. That was the end of that discussion. So I said, I guess you're not going to be participating in the study series. <laughs> Thank goodness. Yeah. I'm so glad they know everything. You I know, mean, congratulations it, to them. Yes. You said that, sarcastically. <laughs> the thing that was really refreshing about that was just how forthright he was. <laughs> and it saved me a lot of time. I mean, yeah, I didn't beat around the bush on I that said, one. Thank did you very <laughs> much. And, you know, we really didn't have many conversations after that because <laughs> there wasn't a whole lot of room for it. So I think the key thing is to embed in the values the spirit of humility mm. and openness mm -hmm. and inclusion mm -hmm. and justice, right, that we want for the world. Yeah. That way, we're not saying, these are the 10 
final values, right? right? Actually, what we're saying is we're starting an experiment, mm. right? This mm -hmm. is a prototype. And uh, we want you to think with us about what is it that we value most? And we want, we want that conversation to take place in a context of where people are becoming more thoughtful about the lives they live and right. what, they, what they might say they value, but what they actually value as evidenced by the way they spend their money, orient their time, right. all those sorts of things. So it sounds like we're using values as another word for priorities. I think that's right. Yes. Yeah. And I would say, to use an image that William Sloan Coffin used to use as Riverside, it's a it's a guidepost, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Rather than a hitching post, right? Oh, yeah. Right? So that the guidepost is, okay, it's here, I get it, and it's leading me on in this direction, but I'm not tied to it yeah. for, forever. You know? Yeah. And I was just thinking the other day that one of the things and this might sound like an odd word to include as a value, although we do use the term influencer a lot. Oh, I guess. Right? It's all <laughs> over the place. Um, but it did occur to me that in our initial list of values, we did not include the word impact. Mm. Like we value impact. But it would make sense for any organization that cares about the world to value impact. Sure. Because if you start a program that's designed to bring refugees to this country, but you don't bring any refugees, you haven't made a very big impact. Right. 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 And so that's the, that's the way, that's just one way of thinking there, this has to be held loosely. Sure. I would say the difference maybe with the churches that you might have experienced, don't want to, don't want to read in anything into this, <laughs> but that the values feel like they're finalized and non-negotiable. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and sure. they're delivered to you. Yeah. Right? So I, I think about values as coming out of the life of Jesus as someone who's saying at an occasion, what do you want? I mean, mm -hmm. that's a question he asks. Mm -hmm. Or how do you read that text? He asks that question. Right. That's very different from saying, here's the way that you're going to do this. Right. And I'll even use one more example. During the early days, let's say this was during the first six months of the pandemic, um, one of the seminaries, uh, a Southern seminary that has a wonderful program in biblical languages offered the biblical languages online course that they did out to their student, out mm -hmm. to their students in the wider world, which mm -hmm. I thought was wonderful. And I actually took one of the courses and I gained a lot from it. And so much so that I thought this would be, if they ever offered anything again, I thought I'd be interested in that. So when they offered a second round of it, I was about to sign up, but there was a there was a different sign up situation the second time around. Mm. You had to sign a declaration of faith about Jesus Christ as your only Savior, and there was a quite a bit of language around it. Yeah. And so let's just say for a person who was an inquiring mind, a seeker, right. trying to find their way in the world, and what what could be my relationship with. God in Jesus and so on, right? Yeah. Not, not sure about the language, trying to sure. figure that out. Here's a course that might have led a person to faith or a deeper faith. Yeah. But I wasn't, I wasn't prepared to sign off on that statement of faith the way it was constructed. Right. So I didn't take that course. And mm -hmm. uh, so to me, that's, that's value as a stipulation. Right? Mm -hmm. and, as a uh, requirement for participation, which I feel like sometimes these these communities of faith can be of like, here's what we believe. If you don't believe it, it's not, you're not, and, well, you're not, you, you won't fit in here. Yeah. And I think that, you know, as I've learned more and more about the differences between communities as they orient themselves to values in this way, sure. some people find enormous comfort from the clarity of that sure. and the non-negotiability. Like, okay, I never have to think about that again. That's fine. Sure. I don't see Jesus as a person who was walking around saying, here's an answer. Now you don't ever have to think about it again. Yeah. Right. I mean, right. getting to know him was really just getting to know the question. It seemed like, and it also seemed like when you'd ask, someone would ask him a question, he'd either respond with another question. Exactly. Or kind of like a half answer. Right. That was about leading that person to think more deeply and asked new questions. Right. Hey. Which is why one of our values is curiosity. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Which doesn't sound like an explicitly religious value. Yeah. Right? Like belief or faith or hope mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. But without curiosity, um, a lot of the world goes missing. 
mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And if the world itself, um, I think it was Bernard of Clairvaux who said, you know, there are two books that God wrote. One is the book of the Bible and one's the book of nature. Mm. So now that opens it up a lot. Right. Right? How am I going to read the book of nature if I'm not curious? Yeah. Right. If I'm not open to that, if I'm not listening, don't have a spirit of wonder. So our values are really designed to engage the person in mm-hmm. that journey. And, uh, you know, I saw the initial um, model that our Christian education coordinators developed for this. And there was a little QR code that, you know, you could put your phone on. And, Cute. Yeah. Stretching me. I love it. A lot. Yes, Gen Z. And it, <laughs> and it leads you to this video, which then sort of is an experience of engagement mm-hmm. and, you know, that cool. wonderful stuff. Cool. Yeah. Cool. I This is a total aside, but it wouldn't be a Brown Hill Radio podcast without me just going whoosh Here we over. Go. Sideways. Um, so many, and then I will bring this back, I promise. Many moons ago. Uh, when I was starting my baking company, mm. um, I was reading all the books on entrepreneurship and, you know, starting your own, you know, startup and all this stuff. And I read Martha Stewart had an entrepreneurship book and I read that. And then I was reading a book called QR Codes Kill Kittens. <laughs> Oh my God. And why they were stupid and would die away immediately. This was a decade ago. Wow. I mean, they couldn't have anticipated, anticipated a pandemic. But I remember when everybody was like, what's this? What is this thing? And why do we? It's an extra step and QR codes. And, it wasn't and, in my vocabulary. And now they're everywhere now. I know. I, I, I used one yesterday to fill out a form. It was crazy. And it's very something? cool. It is something. Yeah, even during the pandemic, right? A lot of time I went and got a test once. I used a QR code. Yeah. Well, it's like, um, it's all that touchless stuff. Yeah. It's all the time. So, sorry, bringing it back. I just. It's a great aside. That, 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 that book title has <laughs> stuck with me in such a funny way, of course. It's like a white book cover with, like, just cue this little kitten on the front, of course. <laughs> of course. Um, so, bringing it back. The. Organization of all of this and the orientation of all of this reminds me of a question I feel like you and I keep asking each other, which is what do we want to get louder about? Mm, mm-hmm, and I'm mm-hmm. curious about if how that has played into this process because mm. it feels like it's kind of been part of the work you and I have been developing and us and our the rest of our fabulous team have been developing over the past probably year, I'd say kind of just a really slow. And I mean that affectionately, like a very intentional pivot, Mm -hmm. just moving Mm -hmm. a little bit more and a little bit more Mm -hmm. um, intentionally towards what things we want to be uh, louder about. Mm -hmm. I think you've really put your finger on something. You know, I think that Talking about values in the way that you describe this, like being clear Mm -hmm. that this is our approach to values, Mm -hmm. right? And clarification Mm -hmm. and prioritization. That's something worth getting louder about, right? Because there's room in there for people's questions. We want to hear more of your questions. That's worth getting louder about. And so that's part of how I see this. Um, I also think that, I guess I see this whole enterprise as something that's driven by a desire to know more about what our church school children think. Mm. Mm-hmm. Like, what are you seeing about the world, right. right? How do you see this? It's not about putting together a prefab curriculum and then just sort of shipping it out there, right. you know, a lot of sheets of things to fill out or whatever. Yeah. It's starting a conversation. And our dream is that by the time these children... Our church school, by the way, is heavily populated by children under the age of seven. Yeah. Right? Very young, yeah. So by the time they get to 13 or 14, and let's say we have a program that gives them an opportunity to claim their faith for themselves as they grow towards adulthood, they will have had a whole series of years mm-hmm. of engaging with these topics. And so the thing that we want to get louder about is help us to see the world through your eyes. Mm -hmm. And I will say that uh, the book that I've been reading called Children Under Fire by John Woodrow Cox about gun violence in this country, seen through the eyes of children, Mm -hmm. is a very difficult book to read, but absolutely essential reading because here's a person who's taken the quiet, nobody really has been paying attention to children Mm -hmm. and their voices and what they're saying about gun violence. He's letting them get louder 
mm. through his book. And I hadn't thought about that till you just asked this question. It's a wonderful question. And it, it also makes me think about Jesus. Of all the times he had an opportunity to kind of demonstrate a model of faith, mm -hmm. he said, unless you become as a child, can't enter the kingdom of God. Right. 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 So that was something that he demonstrated so clearly. And that's what we're trying to do with this program mm -hmm. is to build it up over a period of time. And I guess this is something that I could see us really sharing with the wider community. I think that this approach, even if people are not participating in our version of it, but mm -hmm. this approach to values and looking for different ways to engage them using imagination and activity and service is something anyone could do anywhere. Yeah. You know, and yeah. whether or not they're connected to a community of faith, this could be a great way of digging into the, into the faith. Absolutely. Well, and we look forward to more conversations with you and the rest of our community over the coming weeks and months. As always, this is Round Hill Radio brought to you by the friends and members of Round Hill Community Church. For more information, please visit roundhillcommunitychurch.org. <laughs>